What's up, everyone? Michael Heath with Get Automating. You know, I was talking with a gentleman the other day, had a brilliant idea for a power app. Going to save the company millions of dollars. The only problem is the licenses cost money. Yes, they do cost money. Let's talk power apps licensing strategy. Get Automating. Enhancing humans daily. All right, so you got that big power app in development, ready to go out to production, or perhaps it is the end user that has created an app that now needs to be licensed. Management aside, what are the options? Knowing about the options are going to help with the overall strategy of management and building out your incentive of success within the power platform. So let's take a look. All right, so you got the big power app ready to go into production, or perhaps you've got some individuals, some makers that come to you and say, hey, we built the thing and now we need licensing. And that can be a complex decision. So we're going to focus on simplifying it here. And so if you come out here to the Microsoft Power Apps pricing page, you'll see we have a free developer plan for experimentation. You have a thing called Power Apps Premium. And then you have a volume discount, but that's not the whole story. So let's break this down in, in simple terms, right? Even before you think about premium licensing and a la carte licensing, you got to know what you have. So first off, understand this. Anyone who consumes a power app needs to be licensed, but we need to understand, again, what we have first. So know that there are seeded capabilities within select M365 and Dynamics licensing. When it comes to M365, this is mainly your E3 and E5 enterprise and business class licensing. So check that out. As well as Dynamics, if you're building an app within the environment of your Dynamics instance, there could be some seeded capabilities as well. So seeded capabilities are going to be limited to standard connectors. So the whole premise of licensing in terms of Power App pivots off of standard versus premium connectors. So if we go out here and we Google list of standard connectors for Power Platform, we're going to return this page, which lists all the standard tier connectors, all the premium connectors, preview connectors, custom connectors, you name it, they're all here. We're focusing on standard versus premium. Now, if you scroll through the list of standards, you're going to see that there are various vendors that exist. But to simplify things, standard connectors are mostly anything that exists within 365 walls. Now, there are others, but we're talking SharePoint, OneDrive, Outlook, Teams. Those platforms are going to be a part of standard connectors. The other thing that fits in here is Dataverse for Teams. Now, you hear the term Dataverse, which is like database as a service. We have Dataverse and we have Dataverse for Teams. Dataverse for Teams is this lightweight version that exists within Teams. That is a part of standard. But when we're talking about premium connectors, that is connecting to these data sources within Power Apps that are outside of the standard connectors, that's when we need to look for additional licensing. So these are going to be anything you're connecting with an HTTP call, an API call. It's going to be any sort of on-prem resource. It's going to be Dataverse. Those are all going to require additional license because they are premium data sources. When we look at seeded capabilities, we're limited to those standard connectors, and it does need to be a Canvas app as opposed to a model-driven app because that relies on Dataverse. So if we're looking to use premium connectors or something like Dataverse, then we're going to need to purchase additional licensing beyond what we have already. So that brings us to per app. Now, if you recall, looking at the pricing page here, we don't see anything that lists per app. Pop over to the licensing guide here. You can clearly see you've got your premium and you've got your per app license, as well as a pay as you go, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So let's unpack this per apps license real quick. The per app license gets assigned at the environment level. Think of it like a ticket. You assign it to an environment. When you share the app with somebody, it will consume that pass. Now, this is not pay as you go. They are there. They are purchased. It's assumed they will be used. Again, it gets assigned to the environment. 
So this is a one-to-one -one mapping though. When we think about per app, it gets assigned at the environment, one individual consumes it, and it also is only valid to consume one app or one power page. That's how it works. So it's entitling them to consume one app in one particular environment. All right, so the other thing you're gonna get with the per app license is going to be an aggregated amount of capacity and AI builder service credits. So if we come over here, we can see that within the per app license, we've got 50 for database, 400 for file, and then we have 250 AI builder credits. These are gonna be aggregated at the tenant level and then can be allocated appropriately. The next step over would be, we've got a lot of different apps here we're really starting to cultivate a citizen maker community when it comes to the Power Platform. And so if we think about the limitations to the Power App per app license, just being able to consume one app, it can be very restrictive. So the Power App's premium license is the license that's maker recommended. It's going to allow them to use any premium connectors as did the per app license, but it offers unlimited apps throughout all environments. So this is not environment specific. It is attached to an end user and allows them to freely create and consume power apps. It also comes with more capacity and more AI builder credits. Now, one last piece here from a cost break even standpoint. Think about how you approach this in terms of strategy. We'll use the retail prices here for, for relative comparison. So we have Power Apps premium license at $20 per user, volume discount at $12 after 2,000 users, and we have Power Apps per app at $5. Now that's a one to one mapping. So if you have an individual that needs to utilize four or more apps, it's going to be the cost equivalent to the premium license. So think about that. The other thing here is a pay-as-you-go option, which is $10 a month only if they use the app. Now, as you can imagine, if somebody is only accessing an app four times a year, that might be $40 or $50 since there is an activation fee but that's going to be less than the $60 for the full year and certainly less than the $240. So do the math, think about what the best approach is going to be here. All right, there you have it. Power Apps licensing approach strategically. Don't focus on the cost of the shovel, focus on the value, focus on that buried treasure. If we focus on the value, then we understand that licensing becomes a formality. Know the options and choose them wisely.